Hello everyone, Nathan Forrest here. I'm going to do something a little different at the moment. I am going to read to you a few excerpts from the book Manifold Time, written by Dr. Stephen Baxter. So sit back, relax, be entertained, but most of all, open your mind. Read Melonfant. Introduction to Manifold Time written by Dr. Stephen Baxter. You know me, and you know I'm a space cadet. You know I've campaigned for, among other things, private mining expeditions to the asteroids. In fact, in the past I've tried to get you to pay for such things. I've bored you with that often enough already, right? So tonight I want to look a little farther out. Tonight, I want to tell you why I care so much about this issue that I devoted my life toil. The world isn't big enough anymore. You don't need me to stand here and tell you that we could all choke to death, be extinct in a hundred years, or we could be on our way to populating the galaxy. Yes, the galaxy. Want me to tell you how? Turns out it's all a question of economics. Let's say we set out to the stars. We might use ion rockets, solar sails, gravity assists. It doesn't matter. We'll probably start as we have in the solar system, with automated probes. Humans may follow. 1% of the helium-3 fusion fuel available from the planet Uranus, for example, would be enough to send a giant interstellar arc, each arc containing a billion people, to every star in the galaxy but it may be cheaper for the probes to manufacture humans in situ using cell synthesis and artificial womb technology. The first wave will be slow, no faster than we can afford. It doesn't matter, not in the long term. When the probe reaches a new system, it phones home and starts to build. Here's the heart of the strategy. A target system, we assume, is uninhabited. We can therefore anticipate massive exploitation of the system's resources, without restraint by the probe. Such resources are useless for any other purpose and are therefore economically free to us. I thought you'd enjoy that line. There's nothing an entrepreneur likes more than the sound of the word free. More probes will be built and launched from each of the first wave of target stars. The probes will reach new targets, and again, more probes will be spawned and fired onward. The volume covered by the probes will grow rapidly, like the expansion of gas into a vacuum. Our ships will spread along the spiral arm, along lanes rich with stars, farming the galaxy for humankind. Once started, the process will be self-directing, self-financing. It would take the double domes, think, 10 to 100 million years for the colonization of the galaxy to be completed in this manner. But we must invest merely in the cost of the initial generation of probes. Thus, the cost of colonizing the galaxy will be less, in real terms, than that of our Apollo program of 50 years ago. This vision isn't mine alone. It isn't original. The rocket pioneer Robert Goddard wrote an essay in 1918, 92 years ago, called The Ultimate Migration, in which he imagined space arcs built from asteroid materials carrying out far future descendants away from the death of the sun. The engineering detail has changed. The essence of the vision hasn't. We can do this. If we succeed, we will live forever. The alternative is extinction, and people, when we're gone, we're gone. As far as we can see, we're alone, in an indifferent universe. We see no sign of intelligence anywhere away from Earth. We may be the first. Perhaps we're the last. It took so long for the solar system to evolve intelligence, it seems unlikely there will be others, ever. If we fail, then the failure is for all time. If we die, mind and consciousness and soul die with us. Hope and dreams and love, everything that makes us human, there will be nobody even to mourn us. 
To be the first is an awesome responsibility. It's a responsibility we must grasp. I am offering you a practical route to an infinite future for humankind, a future of unlimited potential. Someday, you know it, I'll come back to you again for money, seed corn money, that's all, so we can take a first step, self-financing even in the medium term beyond the bounds of Earth. But I want you to see why I'll be doing that, why I must. We can do this. We will do this. We're on our own. It's up to us. This is just the beginning. Join me. Thank you. Michael. This is what I have learned, Melonfant. This is how it is, how it was, how it came to be. In the afterglow of the Big Bang, humans spread in waves across the universe, sprawling and brawling and breeding and dying and evolving. There were wars, there was love, there was life and death. Minds flowed together in great rivers of consciousness or shattered in sparkling droplets. There was immortality to be had of a sort, a continuity of identity through replication and confluence across billions upon billions of years. Everywhere they found life, nowhere did they find mind save what they brought with them or created. No other against which human advancement could be tested. With time, the stars died like candles, but humans fed on bloated gravitational fat and achieved a power undreamed of in earlier ages. They learned of other universes from which theirs had evolved. Those earlier, simpler realities, too, were empty of mind, a branching tree of emptiness reaching deep into the hyperpast. It is impossible to understand what minds of that age, the peak of humankind, a species hundreds of billions of times older than humankind, were like. They did not seek to acquire, not to breed, not even to learn. They had nothing in common with us, their ancestors of the afterglow. Nothing but the will to survive. And even that was to be denied them by time. The universe aged, indifferent, harsh, hostile, and ultimately lethal. There was despair and loneliness. There was an age of war, an obliteration of trillion year memories, a bonfire of identity. There was an age of suicide as the finest of humanity chose self-destruction against further purposeless time and struggle. The great rivers of mind guttered and dried, but some persisted, just a tributary, the stubborn, still unwilling to yield to the darkness to accept the increasing confines of a universe growing inexorably old. And at last they realized that this was wrong. It wasn't supposed to have been like this. Burning the last of the universe's resources, the final downstreamers dogged, all but insane, reached to the deepest past. And oh, watch the moon, Malenfant. Watch the moon. It's starting. That was a narration from the first book in Dr. Stephen Baxter's Manifold series, titled Manifold Time. I will leave a link in the description box. Go check these books out. What I want you to do is to tell me what kind of feelings this narration stirred in you. What did you feel? What, if anything, sparked in your mind? Video responses are preferable, but please post text comments as well. After I have received a few responses, I will make a video describing what this means to me and how it is incredibly important that humanity begins to be proactive in curbing its own extinction. Have fun.